Hi everybody, this is Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts and I'm gonna make just a couple of quick adjustments. We have about another minute before we get started. So I'm gonna just use that time to get set up. If you could let me know if you can see really well, that would be great. I'm gonna try to get to the best view that we can have. And get nice and stable. Hi, Margaret Moody, my partner in crime. So let's see if we can get some uh, lighting a little better here. There we go. Can you turn that, that light up as well? All right. Hi, Regina. Happy anniversary. Hi, Mart. Hi, Jackie. All right, so let's see how we're doing. I think we may want to move our... Hi, Gail. Nice to see you. Cheryl, Linda. Okay, and you can hear me okay? Everything sounds good? Let me adjust my angle just a little to give you a better view. All right, so there we go. You guys, I'm shaking like a leaf. I'm so excited. <laughs> You could not imagine my throat is dry. My hands might be shaky on the video, but I'm so excited. So, honey, are we ready? Are we set? Okay, so we have hit our live moment. So I think a lot of you know that I'm launching my new book today. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it real quick. And of course, none of this is possible without giving some credit to the amazing designing power of Leonie West. So I wanna make sure that I give her absolutely all the credit for her design genius. So these are our two products for the day. Let's see if we can kind of scoot out and get a little better view of everything. All right, so we'll be adjusting the camera probably today so we can give you some good views. So this is the template collection. Let's see if we can make this better. There we go, a little bit better. We'll try to come out so we can see. So I'm gonna start pulling things out of here so that you can see. And then of course, here is the book. And I think some of you saw my unboxing and this was the actual first copy of my book. So pretty awesome, pretty exciting. Let's take these fabulous templates out so we can show you these really quick. So my, our light is still causing trouble. Let's see if we can do it better. How is that? Hi Nan from Sweden, I remembered. Okay, so this is our first one. This is the back-to-back -back template. It's three inch number two. And it's got two different depths. And I think some people might have seen, I've done some back-to-back -back, um, instructional videos, but this is really one of my favorite templates. I absolutely love it. So basically the Fun and Fancy was this collection of some of my personal favorites that I just really love. So here's our next one. Spin effects, so versatile and so powerful, just love them. So this is the spin effects number eight and it's sized at five and a half inches. So we'll set that aside. Between the lines template, awesome. Circles, just love them, all kinds of circles, but the between the lines are so smartly designed and so easy to use. So we'll be demoing that. So you can see this is new. Mine are all banged up, but these ones are all really perfect and pretty. So this is the Circles on Quilts Spinning Wheel number 21, and it sews out at a beautiful seven and a half inch size, perfect for an eight inch block. Very beautiful, and I'm gonna show you a really unique way to use it to create a, a fill or a larger block design if you want. So that's what we're gonna do with this one today. And then let's see, we got one more. One more, here we go. The beautiful, simple oval template, three by one and a half. 
And I want you to see that it comes with the inner circle. So actually you're getting five functional templates plus this to be able to use. This is so fun and useful and we'll show you some ideas for using that um, on the So Steady University. So just because I know people are gonna ask, I'll go ahead and just preemptively start with the pricing information. So this is a um, five piece template set. And let me get all these back in here. And the cost of the template set itself is $55. And the book itself is $28. If you buy them together, you have the benefit of getting a discount. It's gonna be $75. So here's the book. Let's pull that open real quick too. I was afraid to take it out, can you tell? Might get dirty, might get used. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's our beautiful book. Love it, so exciting. And I'm gonna show you the back because the back has a lot of the pictures on it of different quilt blocks that were used um, with these templates to quilt them. So the images are here on the back and then there's a more of a, a line drawing on the inside that shows how you can integrate some of the designs and then actually use them on your quilt as well. So the, the joint set, the $75, you get an added bonus. You get the rest of this free class that we're doing today. You'll have access to the whole uh, fun and sassy table topper, which we're gonna start today. And then you will also have a $75 discount on my So Steady Fun and Fancy University class, which is more than 12 hours of video instruction with the templates, how to do all the designs in the book, and as well as some additional tips and you know you get to see how to travel how to plan how to mark so many different things so if you get both of them you will get a 75 dollars off of the university class which the regular price is 150. so just because i want to make sure everybody knows i put that information in a pdf link on this post so you don't have to remember you don't have to write it down you can look at the post and it has So Steady's page link, and it has my Facebook page link, and it has all the information. So Sally Watson, I don't know what the UK situation will be, but I will research that and get back to you. I'm sure that we will have some information that can be for all of our users. So don't worry about that. We'll figure that out. So I have basted this really quickly, just some stitch in the ditch right here, if you can see right there. And I've got my markings with my eight point cross here. And the, this template, if you buy the set, you, you kind of need some straight edge that you're comfortable with. So this, if you already have this one with the westerly foot, this is a great one to have. Also highly, highly, highly recommend the eight point cross hair at a minimum, if not more than one cross hair. And then also recommend that you have a spacing gauge to use. So the first design we're gonna start with is the center design right here. And I'm gonna do something, please don't get mad. It's okay. We're going to use our circles on quilts without a pin. How can we do that? Has anybody ever tried that before? Well, we're gonna try it and I'm gonna show you how. So let me get my foot up and get this in here. So. Let me mark this just a little bit more. It looks like my line's already fading. It's pretty dry here in New Mexico, so these lines never stay for very long. Okay, and I know people are gonna ask. This is by Collins. It's Air Erase. It's a pen that I use a lot. I love it. So here it is, Collins. That's the manufacturer. It's uh, available at most quilt stores. So. If this is my block, we'll set it this way. This is the square. Right now, I'm gonna sew on the diagonals. So this template, it has four 90 degree rotations. So it's gonna make a loop here, a loop here, a petal here, and a petal here. It only makes four, okay? So let's go ahead and we will get it set up. The first thing I wanna do is mark where the pin would be, which is this center spot right there. Let's see if we can get you in a little better. Okay, so I'm going to line the pin up as if the pin were there, and I'm gonna sew on the diagonal. 
as I said. So I'm lining up here and I'm lining up the pin and the little line right there. And this template, it sews from A to B. So we're gonna go ahead and bring our bobbin thread up right there at A. So I have um, matching threads, kind of. You might see some change. The bobbin is variegated. Because the back is white, that's gonna mean that the bobbin will add a little bit more interest there on the back of the design. All right, so when we sew this first one, we're gonna come over to this side. So we can do that first lobe. Oh, darn it, did I mess up already? Maybe I did. Oh my goodness, I'm so nervous. All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll just finish that up. We'll get that on there. I am pretty nervous, you guys, I'm not lying. <laughs> so when we turn it, we can right away get ourselves back on the next point right here. And let's see if we can turn ourselves. Oh my goodness. Let's get lined up. Here we go. We have a 90 degree change with this template. So we have to go ahead and make sure that you're skipping that center line right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll put the next one in. So I'm gonna keep rotating it just a little bit so I can make sure that you guys have a nice view right there. So I like to stop right here at the top and just take a little extra stitch, only one. And you can do it, you know, not with a dramatic stop like I just did, but with a faster stop. But the reason I like that is I like to put at least one more stitch right at the top to anchor that so that it doesn't drag that bobbin thread right there. Alrighty, so here we go. All right. So we've finished the design and we can tie it off right here or we can just come over here. Let me get some of these threads out of here. We got a lot of threads in there. Let's cut those out so that they're not in our way. All right, so my production helper guy, he's here and he's gonna help us. So right here, the spacing for this template is three and three quarters. So if I wanted to, I could come out here and mark the spacing and I could start a whole nother design in this space right here. And that's why I thought it would be kind of useful not to have the pin so we could kind of show you that. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna use my marking tool. Why am I not using the pin? Susan, I'm, I'm gonna show you in just a second. So. If we're gonna try and make something where it's kind of continuous, we'd have to be moving the pin, moving the pin. So we're gonna try and show you how you can use it a different way without the pin and make it a little bit continuous. So part of that is my nerves. I would have shown it a little better, but let's go ahead and we'll just lift up um, a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and mark at three and three quarters right there. I need that baby. So that circles on quilt spinning wheel number 21. Yeah, so my husband is checking because somebody was asking. So now notice that our pin sits right there, right? So when we line that up, so now we can, we can come over and we can put another element of that design right here, okay? And let me spin it real quick. You could go ahead and instead of just marking the pin, you could mark your crosshair right there as well. I'm gonna show um, one idea. 
though, that you can use with this template that's really functional. We have the pin mark right there, so we've got that lined up. Here, I can line up the reference line, and notice that this will fit right into this space, right? So we'll go ahead, we're tucked right in. All right, and now I'll just go ahead and get myself reseated. I've got to make sure that I'm always on the pin each time. And then I'm going to use that reference line right there, making sure. So I've got two distinctive points of reference, and I can also check this center line with the crosshair right here. So this should be lined up right there. Okay, and then we'll put this one in. So a little breathing stitch right there coming right down to B. We'll do the next one, same thing. We're gonna line up the pin and make sure we're right here aligned on there. And then trust that, you know, we've lined up everything just right. So as we come in here, we'll finish that one. Okay, now on the last one, when we come back in here to the center, I would go ahead and take my spacing gauge and also all of those reference lines. So I've got the reference line here, the pin right here, and then my spacing gauge right here. So let me grab that. And I'm just going to make sure that it is that quarter inch right there so that I can close the design. A slight bit of, of manipulation would let me kind of get back to the center. Okay, so I'll tie this off really quickly. All right, so let me show you that real quickly. So the concept that my nerves got the better of me is that you would, you would sew a piece and then as you got to this part, you would put this element in down here, you'd put this whole lobe in and then do this one and put this lobe in and do this one and put this lobe in. And then this whole space becomes a continuous design. And that's just a different way that you can use this spinning template without having to manipulate the pin every time. She has so many great reference lines on here that you have the potential to create this as a fill. And let me show you real quick what that can look like. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way. So this is where we're going with the full project. So let's see if we can just move out a little bit so you can kind of get a little better visual on that. So the concept is a different way, just a different idea for how you could use the tools. So here's the center piece. And then I've got one of these lobes in each quadrant on the four corners. And then that left a little space here. And I'm gonna show you how to put this little piece in so that if you wanna do that, you can do that as well. Okay, so this is the fun and fancy table topper. Now I have not bound it because I haven't had a chance to match any fabric yet. So we're staying at home, so it's waiting. But this is kind of where we're going. So we'll go ahead and we'll move right on to this really cute, this is the spin effects uh, number eight in the five and a half inch, and we'll show you this design next. All right, let's grab that. So, and he sits kind of in line with this part of the design right there. So we'll go ahead and we'll set him up, and there is just a slight bit of crossover on the design where he um, is going to hit that, you know, as he comes into those spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend this line and we'll mark the cross here, right here. I need the cross here, that square, honey. The one that you taped, the big one. Thanks, baby. What kind of batting are you using? Uh, so good question. Somebody just asked about my batting. So let me show you. Ta-da! This is 80-20 poly and cotton blend, and it's doubled. It's not really, really fat, 
But of course, with the two layers, my foot is up a little higher because it needs to be able to move freely. And the reason that I like that, you can see right away, is the loft on it is really nice. But because it's not super thick, it doesn't really pop, pop it up too much. So let's go ahead, we'll get ourselves marked right here with our crosshair. Oh, well, we're only doing one. I guess we only need our center line, but we need our center mark. There we go. Okay, so with this spin effects, we're just gonna put our needle right in at the center there. And let's see if I can get myself right in there. All right. So let's go ahead and put him in first with our stable tape down. All right, so let's get our needle seated right in that seam right there. So it'll help make him invisible. Now we are gonna sew back to this design several times. So I'm not gonna do any extra tie offs yet. He's gonna have plenty of extra stitching. So let's go ahead and get you closer so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so we're just going to put the first shape in. So we'll line it up. He is going to sew a little bit into this design, but that's okay. No problem. That's just part of the design that we're creating, so it'll all work out. So one of the things I love, love to do with my spin effects is I'm gonna tilt him, and I'll, I'll kind of scoot it over just a little bit. The very tip of this leaf right here, I'm gonna touch right at the top. Okay, and I'm gonna hold everybody in place, and I'm just gonna stitch back up, and I'm gonna look through the hole in my foot until I touch the stitch line, and I'll come back, and I'll do it one more time. So I'm pivoting around the foot at the base. Okay, and I'll take it off. I want to show you as we go how it can look. So there you can see right there just by itself like this. I think this is really beautiful. And you can see with the puff, it really, really makes that beautiful shape right here. And if you did these kind of in a circle, it kind of looks like it's pushing the design. It kind of creates a lot of motion by itself. So I can do this. So in the design, I've done two of these just like this on opposite sides, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the template back on. Now, if we do it on the other side, so oh, let me show you, we'll line up the other point right here where it's, the tip of the lobe is touching the plastic right here. So the stitch line on the outside, the plastic is right against it. And now we're gonna sew the opposite way. So we'll do the same thing. We'll sew until the stitch line, till we touch the outer stitch line. Okay, and then we'll sew back in. Oh, went crazy there. And then we'll do one more. So while I'm stitching, I'm just going to mention one more time because we have some new people that are joining. I did post a link to all of the pricing, to the products, to the specials, what you get with each product, and it's in a PDF link right on this post. So when this is posted, if you want to tap on that link, you'll be able to have that information right at your fingertips really quickly. So I'll take this off and I'll show you. So can you see that? I love this cross hatching. Let's get you in a little closer. Let's see if we can bring you in. Love that. Isn't that beautiful? And almost any of your spin effects templates have the potential to do something like this. If you can pivot around the foot, you can create a beautiful cross hatch like this with your template. So definitely try that. I just think that is so beautiful and it looks awesome. So let's get it tied off and we'll move to something else. 
So the way that I did mine is I, I put just the, the two, one side um, of the echoes on the opposite sides, and then I put the cross hatches on the two other sides just to create a little visual balance. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll grab another one. So part of the goal today is to show you at least one thing about each of the templates, one unique thing or one unique way to use it so you get a feel for how powerful they are. So let me go ahead and mark the center line right here. So I've talked before about whenever you're working with our templates, if you're trying to put you know, something in a border or something like that, you wanna be really strongly aware of the size. So let me show you this really quick. Notice that this space right here is bigger than one inch. So the circle that we have, the between the line circle is one inch. And I wanna mark a center line or I wanna use my my seam here to sew down this space. But I wanna make sure that my circle's in the middle, right? So let me show you, I'm, I'm at basically one and a quarter, maybe just under. So let me measure from end to end really fast. So 12 and a half, so six and a quarter is the middle. So we'll try to get a little better measure right here. Six and a quarter, right there, is the middle. Okay, why do we need to know the middle? So if I sew this whole thing, and I put circles in this whole space, so let's move out so you can see the space better. Okay, we need to give you a better view. All right, so we have kind of this long border area, right? And we wanna fill this with circles. But what I don't wanna have is I don't wanna have a big, nice, full circle right here, and then on the other end, my circle looks like this, right? I hate that, it drives me bananas. If I'm gonna to try to go through all this work and create something fabulous and beautiful, then I want to have my design centered. So the best way to do that is to start in the center. You can mark it off, but I, I think this is just the most practical way. So let's go ahead and we'll kind of get ourselves seated and we're gonna use our template and use that to find where the foot needs to go. So the lines that are on the Between the Lines template are so useful because we don't have to do a lot of extra marking, right? We can use the lines right there. So let me get you in a little closer so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna give a shout out um, to, to um, Yazzie because she, I just saw that she's watching. So I have about seven or eight different Yazzie bags and several of them are so steady bags, but I also have multiple other bags from her and they are completely fantastic and she is just such an amazing person and an amazing businesswoman and a friend and I just wanted to give her a little shout out. So, so there, I did it. So if you look right here, I want to get, this is the center line and I want to have the same spacing right there. So because I'm not exactly like at a quarter for these measures, I'm looking right here between my lines, which is where the name comes from, to get everybody lined up. And there is the center right there of the template. So that's where I can start in the middle. If I want the circle to actually be right in the center, then I can set my needle there and I can push the template to it. But we want our circle to be sort of centered right in the middle of the border space. So we'll pick up our needle right on this side, get myself lined up right there so that the space here is the same as there. And this is a pretty much a visual spacing that we're doing right now. Okay, so let me get my bobbin thread. Oh, it's being so ornery, darn it. I think I cut it. He just does not wanna come up. All right, yes, I have my free motion glider on, love it. I would not wanna be without it, it's such a great tool. All right, we'll get ourselves reset back there in the center. And now I should be able to pick up that bobbin thread just fine. So you can see this is where my stitch is gonna be for my circle and notice that because I made my, my um, space here just a little bigger than one 
my circle will have a little bit of breathing room and it won't be just butted right up to the very edge of the seam allowance, which I really like. It, it kind of is going to let my design have just a little bit of room to breathe. So sew the circle and one and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and just go crazy. I'm going to put a little spiral in here. And notice that I'm using the template to help me and also to space the design on the way back out. So when I'm done, I'm going to stop right in the middle on this back side. So let's turn this so you can get a better view as we go. All right, so this circle, this part right here, let's see if we can get you in there so we can see a little better. I'm always trying to worry about what you guys see. I hope you can see well. There is a little circle right here. And what's so great about this marking is once I've done a circle back here, I can line that circle right there up on the stitch line. And that's another resource for me to make sure that I have everybody lined up as I sew. So I'm gonna do the spiral and then I'll do straight, just plain. Okay, and then I'll do another spiral. And that gives a little bit of visual variety there. So with the circle, just make sure that you kind of keep yourself tucked in. And as I go out, I can use the foot to kind of keep me right in the middle of that space until I hit this outer boundary. And then I'll just keep right along, okay? So we'll go ahead and do the next one. So we did spiral and we'll do blank. All right, and I would just keep going here until this area is filled. And because we started in the middle, then if I go back to the other side, then I should have exactly the correct amount of circle, even if it's partial or whatever, I should have just the same amount on the other side. Right, so like this one, he might not fit. He might have just the partial circle in there. Let's see if he does or not. So make sure you stay connected with the foot, keep him tucked all the way in, and we'll just kind of give him the same overstitching. So let's take this off. All right. So let's see if we can turn it just a little bit this way. There you go. So isn't that cute? And because we are cognizant of how wide this is, if this is exactly one inch, the circle size is not going to change, but if your boundary is exactly one inch or even a little narrower, if your seam is a little big, I don't recommend putting this in a one inch space right there because then it looks really crowded. It looks like you crammed it in there. So if you want to put little circles in there, maybe you want to get a little smaller circle that you can put in there. So just something to think about, like when you're doing your borders and different things like that. Because I have this puff batting right here, I'm not going to put anything in this little tiny space. This is gonna be lifted up because this will have um, ditch stitching right here. So this will kind of frame this center design right here. So I won't go ahead and sew the other side. I'll just kind of sew out here so I can just get my thread free. And that way my bobbin will be nice and long, thank goodness. Okay, and so I would just go ahead and I would complete the rest of this design on this side. And then on this other side, which is the same area, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I have a different design that we would do. So um, how many people wanna see another, another circle design, a different one? I'm gonna use the dreaded F word. There's some free motion in it, but I think it's still worth seeing. And so I'll maybe just do one in the center. I won't do a whole bunch of them. I'll just do one so you can see how the design can be. And we'll use the same balance where we have the circle centered on the space. So we'll split it right like this. So I, I think some people have seen my spirals before and I do like that I have the template because it really helps me to keep everybody round and make sure that my circles look really pretty. But 
let's get lined up here. So one of the things that you can do is after you do all of your circles, you want to do, you know, the entire row of circles. And then you can put this fill in. And if you do it three times, you can even get back to your start point. And if you do it only two times, then you can travel across the space and get to the other side. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I do my circle. Right, and I'm gonna come to the side because I want this design to come this way. So let's get in a little closer so you can see this part. Now, I'm gonna take this off because I, I don't need it right at this moment, and I think you'll have a better view if I take it off. And I'll even cut this just to get these out of our way as well. All right. So right here, I want you to imagine you're gonna just make an S and make it kind of big and deep, so like that. So we'll make, and don't rush it, just make it nice and slow. So if I wanted two of it, I can go back on that side. And if I wanted a third one, then I would go on the other side and try to just get back to the center. You're just aiming for the middle and then you can just keep going. You can do all, all S's down and then all S's back on one side and all S's back on the top of the other side. And then let's tie this off. And get our needle free. And let's grab that sample. I'm gonna show you a better sample of how it looks because this one's already all done. Okay, so there you go. Can you guys see that? Doesn't that look awesome? So you're just making a little S through the middle and you're just aiming for the center where they connect, the two circles connect. So that's your kind of your aiming point. And you can make it big. I mean, they're not perfect, but they look amazing as texture when you do that. So definitely want you to go ahead and give that a try. It's pretty flexible. And if you need kind of a visual, just make a little X with your pen and then just try to copy it. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not, it's still gonna look great. The key would be just trying to make sure that they don't touch. See how this is kind of wonky right here? It doesn't match perfectly, but as long as they're not touching, you're still gonna get the impression of that design. And that would be a really cute fill that you could do. Okay, let's see where we're next. So we've done circles, we've done our spin effects, we've done something with our are beautiful, I really love this um, Circles on Quilt Spinning Wheel 21. So let's go ahead and do something with our oval, which is right here. All right, so, so I know that you guys could do lots of things on your own. So I'm gonna try to show you maybe some more ideas about how to use them differently. Okay, so I've got my oval right here. And let me show you um, how we can put a little clamshell in here. And again, if you wanted your clamshell to be centered, you would mark the center and work out from the first row. You need a reference row. So let's go ahead and we'll mark that and we'll start from that. I'm giving away all my secrets today. All right, so I'm lined up here on the center and I'm just gonna make a straight line out so we can find the center of this blue space. Should be lined right up with our design as well. Pretty good. Right there, good enough, ah, perfect. All right, so this template, this distance from here to here when he sews out is one and a half inches. But this space right here, it's really small and I wanna put two rows in there. So let me show you how you can manipulate your own template to give you what you want. I can take my straight edge and I, I wanna show you the pen that I'm using. I'm using a Visa V wet erase marker and let me show you what that means. So I can line this up on the reference lines right there, or I can, I can choose whatever spacing I want, truthfully. You're not really in the camera. Okay, here, sorry, my husband said you're not in there. Okay, so I'm lining this reference line up, and I'm gonna shorten 
the design a little bit. So I wanna kind of square it up. Let's see if we can help you see it a little better like that. And then just put your ruler right against the edge. And then I could make my own reference lines just like that. I can even make one more. I'll go ahead and make two because I don't know which one we might want to use. So we'll make two. All right, so there we go. So now instead of having this one and a half inch template, which is from here to the top, now I have three different sizes all of a sudden. And I can make something that's a little shorter and a little squat just like that. Uh, let's see, so Lillian, can you, um, would you practice with a large circle first? Um, would I practice what? So Miss Lillian Yardley, if you could elaborate on your question, I'll try to answer it for you. So let's go ahead and we'll get our needle set over here and we're gonna do this clamshell right here. So I can see my needle space. I'll get my self set right there and get my bobbin thread up. Might be a little bit harder to see on this color, I think. The thread is matching. All right, and we will probably tack this right here in the, in the uh, ditch because we probably won't come back right to that spot for a little bit. All right, let's get this guy on here. All right, and what I like about this wet erase marker is he's not gonna get wiped off on the quilt. Okay, so that's really, really important. Now I'm gonna set this and I'm gonna line the lines that we made up this way. And notice how now I can make a much smaller clamshell in here if I wanted to. And I'll, I just will make my design fit the space by making that small adjustment. So this is a way that you can get a lot more out of your template than if you just were saying, oh, that doesn't fit, I can't use it. Yes, you can. Manipulate it, make it fit, because you can make it fit. All right, and we'll come back here, get this last one in. Okay, so some people know that I don't like to travel up the outside right here. So let's get you in a little closer. I like to travel back to the top of the clamshell and then manipulate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep lined up right there like that. And I'll come right to the top, right at this center mark. And now this line will line up at the top of the circles or the clamshells right there. And notice how maybe mine is a little too big to fit, so I could make a little baby one. And right here, all you're looking at is making sure that you have that quarter inch. So that's how you can play with your template and give you more options for designs. And uh, later on, I'll add um, on the So Steady University, I'll do a little bit more development with this, and we're going to add some free motion fills on the university. I'll go ahead and tie that off really quick. So Lillian clarified if you would uh, practice on larger circles uh, while doing the free motion fills in there, is that easier way to practice and learn it? So um, Lillian, that is a good question. So what I would tell you is whatever you wanted to fill, you should practice as you desire. If you like to work with larger circles and you wanna fill that, then I would definitely do that. I, I have this little circle and I love these little spirals. And I think for a bigger circle, the spiral is harder to control the more rotations that you go in. And a, and a big circle is gonna take much more rotations. So with this one, I mean, this is only one inch. So that's like quarter inch, quarter inch, and then you're in the center already. So for this, size it works well and I would say I've done it with the one and a half inch circle as well by the time you start getting up to bigger than a two inch circle I would say that then that becomes a little more challenging and you might want to have some reference lines on the circle to help you but yeah I would start small I, I wouldn't necessarily go ahead and put something bigger on there but that is a great question 
Did you have any more questions, honey? So the batting again, I know it's a double layer. Yeah, this bed. batting, it's 80-20. It's, it's poly and cotton blend. And uh, mm. just a very, very basic, uh, I believe this is warm and natural 80-20. And it's two layers. And that's what gives us this nice puffed right here where you can see the circle really lifts. And then if you were to put some microfill in here, the circles would even jump even more because this will really stay lofty and then these would compress quite a bit. All right, so let's put a fun design right in here. We're gonna do one of the back-to-back um, -back template designs and let's talk really quickly. If this is the edge of my project and I have a seam allowance, so I like a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll plan for that. And then you should plan for whatever seam allowance is your favorite. If you're using a quarter inch, you would want to mark your seam allowance like this. And mine's going to be a little bigger because I want a half inch allowance. But you want to know where the center of your seam allowance is because when we start this design, we want our needle to begin right in that space that we just created right there so it is not into the binding. We want it to start right there and then this area could be covered up and we don't care as long as we have the very point where we're going to start. All right, so we'll get ourselves seated real quickly, get our needle in there. And I may even start maybe just a stitch or two inside the seam allowance because I want to make sure that this absolutely does not get covered up or if the quilt draws up or anything. I want to make sure that this is going to really be visible because this is the start. The design is going to flow out from this point. So if it's hidden, I think that it changes the design. Um, but that's definitely your choice. Let me show you something else I've done on my crazy template. You're going to laugh. Okay, so with this template, I love it and I use it so often. And look what I did. So this is just the same uh, wet erase marker. It's not Sharpie or anything like that. Although you can do that if you wanted. But what happens is I know that there are two different depths. But so many times I have lined up on the wrong side of the template. So I want to go ahead and make some markings there so I'll know that this is the narrow side and this is the deep side or vice versa. So on mine, the purple one is the shallow. This is the one and a half side. And what that means is right here from this top of the curve to the bottom of the curve on this side, the difference between the height from the top to the bottom is one and a half on this particular template. And you can see that marking right here, right? So it's from the, the bottom of the curve to the top, that differential. Now on this side, let's flip it over. This is the taller side. So from the top here to the bottom here is one inch. So what that means is right here, this line is the middle where the curve changes. I call this the curve split line. So the C curve right here goes like this. And then here, it's going to start going down up to there. So this is one inch here to the middle. And then from this middle to one inch here. That's what those numbers mean. So you can use that. This is going to make a two inch depth of curve. So could you fit that in a two and a half inch border? You bet. Um, would I want to put it in a two inch border? If I was a perfect seamstress maybe that would work but it would look kind of crowded if your stitching went up into your ditch right there so just something to be aware of always when you're thinking about what you could do this one and a half i think would be better for a two inch space than this okay so what we're going to do is teach you one of the techniques that is in the book and i call it fanning so i want to start um with this little gap, I can do it either way. I could put it on like this, and I could have the curve, which would end up being in the batting first, and then I can just move it along. But we'll start on this side, because we're gonna move the template this way using the existing stitch line. So if I do it this way, then the stitch line's over here. I don't have anything to register it with. So you wanna put it on this side, and, and you can always uh, just do like the first one with your marker and that will help you make sure that you have the correct information. 
So we'll start right here and we're just gonna sew until we hit, hit the border right here. So get your fingers right up into here. Don't be holding back here. If you hold back here, look what happens to this area right here. Can you see that? Get your fingers right in there and then you'll be able to stitch. Okay, and I can change my hand positions as I need to so that I can keep moving. I'm gonna touch the stitch line right there, the seam, keep everything in place, and I'm gonna stitch back. I call this the uh, no breathing time, right? You don't breathe until you get back to the beginning. No, I'm just kidding, you can do whatever you wanna do. But the concept is hold on to this template until you have stitched back, stitch out and stitch back without letting go. Because it, it's easy for the template to shift just ever so slightly. And then if you just let it move, then you won't have as pretty of this stitch back line. Okay, so let's move out a little because we need a better view for you. We need to show you some things. Okay, so we've stitched this first line and he ends right here. So now I can use a reference line, whatever reference line I want. So I think we'll use that one. Oh, we'll do something fun. We'll do, we'll do two different ones. We'll do this. We'll do a quarter inch. So we have the edge of the template touching out at the boundary. So this will make a quarter inch echo right there. And we'll stitch back. So this design is gonna get a little bulky right where the needle is, right there, because you're gonna end up stitching there a lot. So now we're gonna put a three quarter inch spacing. So right now we have this open area right here, and then we have the first etched line, and I'm gonna have this line up on the second etched line. That's gonna give us about a one inch space by the time the quarter inch is added. So then we touch and we walk it back. Okay, and now we'll put that quarter inch echo in again. So we'll be touching it right where the stitching is, touching the template right to the stitch line. That'll give us a cute little echo in there, which will give us a little separation. And I'll talk to you about why we're doing this as soon as uh, we finish. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that one inch spacing now. And notice how we're just rotating around the foot. So everything is nice and easy. We're not uh, rushing. We're just gonna try to keep everybody in their place. And this double stitching on this design actually I think is very beautiful and really helps show the texture. With this um, is a very light colored thread and that double puff, really you can see the loft in there so beautifully. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing. And notice how we're kind of at the shortest part of the triangle. So we won't get as much of the curve here. We'll just get this first part, but that's okay. So there's our quarter inch. Now, if you didn't want a double stitch, I could travel in the ditch but I think it looks a lot cleaner. I'd rather just sew the ditch by itself. So I'm, I like this travel method because I think it helps clean up things without having a lot of uh, over stitching. And if we st stitched in the ditch, what we would have would be closed, open, closed, open. So you'd have punch down and then you'd have a big opening and a punch down and a big opening. And this way, once we just sew this one time, it'll just clean up this whole area. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll put the one inch in again. So there's a lot of talking, not enough sewing, right? Sew faster. No, sew at your own pace. Nice and relaxed and at your own pace. Have you ever been sewing and your you know, husband or your child comes in and they're like, mom, and all of a sudden you're like, ah, dang it. Don't talk to me while I'm sewing, I messed up. Yes, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> so we having to kind of uh, guess where our space is because now we have to use this part right here. So the line that we were using was this one. 
we had the first etch line, so we kind of have to guess over here about right there. And then just keep good contact. Make sure you have the foot touching nicely each time. All right, and let's see how we're doing. So we need our quarter inch echo. We're almost done. We're real close to the edge here. Thanks for your patience. I mean, I can't really show you unless I sew it. So it's just how it is. Hopefully you're not getting bored. If you have some questions, my sweet husband and awesome production manager is here for your help. So you could go ahead and send them his way. Right now, this ruler is called the back to back template three inch dash two. That's how you would find it. It would be B two B three two. And you would definitely find that on our website, on the Sew so Steady website. And it is part of this fun and fancy collection. So this would be something that would be part of the collection. If you purchase our collection today, this awesome template is in it. And there's quite a few different designs that are available for this size. So I think we'll put this last one in here. We definitely want to get at least one more in there. So we don't want to keep this as a really big open space. So I think we'll try to at least put his echo in there. And you've got to come all the way back because if you don't, it's much harder to figure out where your spacing is. But right here, once I kind of go outside the border, I can just sew crazy and, you know, until I get back on the template. And let's see. Oh my goodness, all right, we can sew right to the end. So that'll be our last one. So I could fill this too. There's not that much space. It's only about the one inch right there. So let's okay. go. You got it? Okay, so that'll hold it right there, babe, so you don't have to hold it. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get you squared up so we don't make you dizzy. So one of the things I like to do, now that we've got these spaces, we can put different fills. And if you make the space here even bigger, then you have the potential to put in even more um, ideas. So let's go ahead and I'll just take this thread out and I'll show you the samples so you can see what some ideas might be for you. So this is the one that we just did, and I think you can see it really well because the contrast with these threads are really bold. And I just put this little wiggle fill in here because otherwise you're gonna have that big open space. And this kind of contrasts with our movement here where this is really regular and really even, whereas this is open and wavy but they're both wavy lines. So I think they make a really good contrast and that way you can fill in this space. Because these are kind of tight, they may be good enough just by their own, by themselves. By putting that little one inch in there, you kind of give a little bit of energy to this design. And if you just left it open, you could just do them all even, that would make an even different design. So one of the other designs that you can do is you can start from the middle here and you can do the same exact technique that we did, but instead of starting out at the corner, you're starting in the middle. And you can see that this is the deep side of the curve. It, the curve is much deeper right here and it kind of spirals around. And then because we left a bigger space, we were able to put different fills in there. And what I did is I put a fill and then open, fill, open, fill, open. And what I like to do whenever you're doing something like that would be, Go ahead and before you even sew, just mark the areas that you want no stitching, like that, or mark the areas that you do want to stitch. Use some convention that you'll remember, and that way you won't accidentally fill in a space that you wanted to leave open. So that's a great way just to give you that visual cue so that you can make sure that you have exactly what you wanted. So at this point, we've done um, one template uh, with every design and have we yeah we did let's do one more we'll just show you one more cool fun thing because we can okay yeah so we have we have a little more time we're not in a big hurry okay so let's go ahead and get our crosshair square and we'll mark right here in this space so that plastic square baby 
Alrighty, and again, we can use this area out here as our center line to help us get our crosshair square lined up. So I'll just hold this up so I can get lined up. So I want back, move back. You just do that, not that one. Okay. Keep it here. Okay. So right here, I'm going to just use that center line, and he should be lined up right on the corner as well because this is all square. I hope. And let me get my marking pen. And we'll mark that center right there. Oh, I think I was a little off on that one. There we go. So always with the spin effects, we want to go ahead and we'll start the needle right in the corner, right in the uh, center of the crosshair mark. So I'll go ahead and I'll get that there. And we'll lift up our bobbin thread. And before I set him down, I want to put my template on. Oh, you guys know how I am. I'm making a mess. Now I have like 10 templates all over the place. <laughs> I know I have my ruler rack. I should just put them on there, but I just, I get distracted. I'm a very messy quilter, I admit it. My sewing room is hardly walkable some days. All right, so let's get our needle in place. Let's see if we can see our dot right there. Right there, okay. So one of the things that I like about this template, and I'm gonna tell you, I, I am going to refer to this side of the template as the pointy side, and this side of the template as the curvy side. And that just helps you know, you know which one that you're using on any given time. To make the design in a triangle, I'm gonna line up this edge and this center line, and I'll sew out and back. If I, if I didn't want any double stitching, then you could just start out here and sew into the center, but we'll go ahead and we'll double stitch because we can. Okay, so right there and back into the center. And let's maybe bring you in just a little closer. Susan asks if you recommend stitching around the outside so that you don't distort the corners. Um, so I did that, yes, because this is just a base for me. I just wanted to make sure that everything stayed in place. And I also wanted to make sure I didn't stitch my corner like that, which I have done many times. So, so that way this, this is just holding everything in place. It's even more important if you have this double batting because you don't want things moving around and maybe the batting might get uh, shifted underneath and then you would have like a little fold in there. So for me, I went ahead and I ditch stitched this center square right here, this whole thing, that was my center based. And then I went ahead and I just sewed around within my quarter inch space. And that's just gonna help hold everything. So right now we have a double stitch right here. If we wanted to maintain that, we could easily double stitch every lobe on here, and that would help make sure that the design stays the same if we wanted to. So we're lined up on that crosshair mark, sewing right into the center, and this would be where you would just sew around it again if you wanted a double stitch. Especially if you have a decorative thread, a double stitch can be a really great way to add some detail because then the thread becomes more visible because mine is almost invisible it wouldn't even matter if i stitched it twice it'll just help with the puff right there so we'll get lined up we'll do the next one we'll go ahead and we'll double stitch it and it doesn't matter which direction we go in this instance. I mean, it, it's not going to matter. So you can see, I'll just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> you should do that too. All right, we'll do this next one. Now, I think a lot of people have seen many of our spin effects in the past. One of the cool features of the spin effects is that on one side, it'll make one design. And then on the other side, it'll make a totally different design. And then you can mix them. So we have quite a few different combinations of how the spin effects can be used in the book. We show you quite a few different options. And then here's the last one. And we'll just line this last one right up with the seam, which is our crosshair mark for this edge right here. All 
All right, and we're in the ditch right now. And this is a good time to show you why you definitely want to have your spacing gauge and your straight ruler. So let me give you a little extra tidbit here. So I've got my 12 inch arc. And if I wanna travel with this design right now, let's cut these threads real fast. Maybe I can just throw them back here for the moment. So right here, if we don't ditch stitch right here, this part of this design is gonna stay the same level. To really give this leaf definition, I need to ditch this right here to punch that down so that I can have this. So I was really careful when I built this about which way I wanted my seam allowance to go. So here, the pink is lifted up because there's no additional stitching. So by putting a little extra uh, seam allowance turned towards the pink, that's gonna create a little more loft here. So I really want to ditch on either side of this pink also to make the pink lift up. So these are decisions that you can make as you're planning and thinking about your design. When I was beginning to quilt, I didn't really think about that. That was like a layer too complicated for me. I just wasn't ready for it. But now that I'm able to, to think a little bit, I think about the quilting first. I think about, oh, what can I do there? How would that work? How would that seam allowance have to go in there? Well, since I'm on the inside and I've got this correct color, I'm gonna put this spacing gauge right up against this seam and I can control having my needle go right in the ditch right there because this is pressed towards this side. So right now I should be able to really easily just sew right down that ditch. And if it looks like it's getting wider, you know, if your seam is wonky, you can correct that. Just use your eyes to say, okay, it looks like it's too wide. Right here, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna stay right where I am, and I'm gonna come back to my design. Was there a question, babe? Yeah, what, who makes this again? Collins? Um, the, the purple airy race pen that I used, it's made by Collins, and it's available in most quilt shops. So right here, this is the design. And I think I need maybe one or two more stitches up. So I would want to put a little echo right in here. So actually I maybe need a few more stitches. I want to be able to lay the ruler right on this stitch line right there. So right there, I'm not quite far enough away in order to do it. It looks like I need maybe another stitch or so. Okay, so I'm right laying against this stitch line. My needle is a quarter inch away from the foot, and now it's gonna keep this at a quarter inch right here. So I can go ahead, I'll sew in, and I'm going to sew until the front of the foot touches this stitch line right here, and that makes the needle a quarter inch away. And I'll prove it. So now if I lay this right here, now I can just sew, and that's a quarter inch right there. Because this particular spin effects has a straight line towards the top, it's really a great one for putting a straight line echo in, which makes it really easy to change the size of this design and make it bigger. So just by putting a few echoes in here, I can rapidly change the design from five and a half to eight to 10. And then I can even make channels in that echo that I can fill and add some a little bit of uh, interest in there. Oh, darn it, I went too far. <laughs> Can you tell? I was talking. So here at this top, we would want to stop right at the crosshair mark. So I'll show you bonbon bon time, since some people know that and some people don't. If you make a mistake, one of the things that I developed in my classroom for my students is a way for them to fix their mistake and keep on going without a big to-do. If I come back and I put my needle right at the corner, that's a very visible spot that your eye is drawn right to. So I'm actually going to correct a little further back where it's straight right here so nobody will see. Make a mistake, literally just pick your needle up and I'm going to just lift up my foot so that my threads are loose and I'm going to come back to where I was last correct and I'm going to set my needle into the stitch line right there. Now, before I do anything, I'm just gonna tack it in place. I'm gonna sew 
a few stitches right in that spot to make sure that that is now anchored. Right, so let's flip it so you can see what we're doing here. So now we're gonna sew right up to this crosshair line and it's correct right there, but we're just gonna stop right there. All right, so there's our crosshair mark right there. And now we should be able to come back down the other side. We'll just line up our ruler. And now we can put that echo right on this side. Stopping when the foot touches the stitch line right here. Line it back up. Here we'll be outside of the boundary. And I can just, you know, sew to wherever I want at this point because we're outside of the quilt, in fact. Get lined up. Sew right in. Right there. And when I get down here, let's think about this for a minute. I'm going to come down. This will be the echo. I'm going to ditch in and ditch out. There's no reason for me to have, a, you know, another start and you just wanted that. So I'm gonna think a little bit ahead. I'm gonna get to this point right there. And now I can ditch this whole area and then this whole side of the finished. Spacing gauge is awesome for this, right? It's so good. And I'm gonna look inside there and I'm gonna control if my stitching needs to come, you know, in or out a little for those first couple. I wanna make sure that I'm looking so that I can do that. And then once you're in, just hold your ruler in place and you should be able to walk right back to where you were. I think I'm good. I think I'll be able to get all the way out. It's hard to sew backwards because you can't see where you're going, but. All right, so let's pull our needle up. And I'll trim those threads. I have a lot of loose threads right now on my quilt. I usually will trim them if they're either stitched over so that I know that they're secure. Like right here, we've stitched this center area a bunch of times. So I can literally just cut those. And this one's outside the boundary, so we can cut him. I think we got stuck up here. There we go. All right, so let's show you a little bit of what we've done. So we've, we've learned a lot. Do you feel like you've learned a lot today? There's a lot of cool things. And the, the fun and fancy guide, the inspiration for it is, I think that people need a step off place. They need inspiration. And the book is designed not just to teach you how to do a design, but how you can mark for it, how you can fudge for it. Um, the videos really show a lot of that manipulation because a, a one and a half by three inch oval is great before you start quilting when you have everything marked. But once you sew and the quilt starts drawing up, what do you do if it doesn't fit anymore? So I show a lot of tips in the video series about how you can manipulate and manage your fabric when you're quilting to make the design behave. And so in addition to that, at the very end of the book, I have some uh, pictures that kind of show you how you can change the designs to meet your quilting needs. So like here's a quick example of just one of the pictures in the book. I'll just show you right here. How I quilted it, how I put the lines in and, and what I chose that kind of made an example of this. And then the physical picture of how this actually quilts out is on the back. So it's designed to create that patchwork connection where you can not just say, oh, she showed me this design, but to see how they might be put onto an actual quilt. So one of the things that I'm gonna do going forward is I also created a quilt sampler and we'll be introducing that next Sunday. And once you make the quilt sampler, if you'd like to participate in a quilt along, we're going to be offering that as an option as well. So. If there's any questions right now, I would love to answer them. And thank you for my <laughs> patience with me as I was nervous. So Jay, I'm gonna answer your question. This is a poly cotton, 80 cotton and 20 poly, not wool. It's an 80-20 blend. 
Uh, let's see, I do have two layers, that is correct. Um, so Debbie Becker, I'm gonna answer your question. When I mark on a template, which I will grab mine really quick, if I need any type of visual reference line, I use either this tape, if I just need a dot or a tick mark or something like this, I use a Visa V wet erase marker. And I have lots of different colors of those. So, you know, you can use color uh, coding if you need something, like if you're doing clamshells and you're doing the little fanning fringe with the clamshells, one could be red, then the next dot could be blue, and the next dot could be green, and they could indicate which one is the top, which one is the middle, which one is the bottom. So the reason I like this is if you put a dry erase marker on your template, yes, it'll come off, but it may come off on your quilt. This is not going to wipe off on your quilt, unless your hand's wet, of course which mine are because they're kind of sweaty. <laughs> but I like that it doesn't end up on the quilt and potentially damaging the quilt. Uh, so let's see. All right, I'm just checking through really quick, make sure that we got uh, some. Somebody asked what kind of a machine uh, are you using? Okay, so the reason I, I, I'm gonna tell you what machine I use, but I don't like to answer that because I don't want you to think that your machine can do it for you. It can help. A good machine is very powerful and very important. I am sewing on a Janome 9450. I do like it, but I have sewn on many, many machines of every brand. And probably if you have a decent machine, your machine is probably going to be great. And it's capable of doing these things. So I love my Janome, I won't lie, I do like it, um, but there's many other machines I also like. So I, I hope that you will find the one that fits you. Machines are like a car. They have to think how you think. Somebody created that machine and they created how it interacts with the user and maybe they're not like you. So if you're interested in a machine, I really encourage you once our quarantining is over, Try to go and test them out and see which one resonates with the way that you think so that you can feel comfortable and happy with your machine. That's really the most important advice that I can give to somebody. All righty, so let's see. Uh, so my name, uh, Fun and Fancy, is like I want a nice, fun detail and romanticism to my quilting. I'm, I'm a little bit crossed over. I'm not so much of a modern quilter. I'm more of a transitional quilter. And I like that idea that yet you could make your designs as fancy as you want, but you always want to be able to have fun no matter what. So uh, Carol asked, do the videos on the university include all of the blocks? Um, so the sampler quilt videos on the university are how to make the quilt, and they include eight different blocks that are in the book. And if you purchase that pattern and you make that quilt, then, then we'll participate in the quilt along together. But that pattern is required. And I will be having Facebook support group, both for the Fun and Fancy Path to Ruler Work quilting, where we will have more of a social environment where people can ask questions and we'll try to set up a common time where we can address that and, and the people that are participating in that class can come and show off their work or if they have trouble, they can ask a question or something like that. The university will host the classes, but I will be hosting the support group myself through the Fabricated Quilts Facebook page. All right, so let's see, did that answer that question? It's midnight, okay, watch it later. I love it, thank you. Thank you, Nana, for staying up. Okay, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna say goodbye. I ask if you could, if you would like and share my page, we are going to be offering a giveaway today and we'll be giving away the bundle uh, to some lucky person. So if you like, comment, and share, and you need to like, comment, and share on this 
Sew Steady page for that, for the giveaway, because they are sponsoring our giveaway today. Thank you very much. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And then if you would like and maybe share my Facebook page or my Facebook group, that is where we are sort of providing the one-on-one. -on -one. And I can also help you if you have some questions about this. You can send me an email. You can message me through Facebook. I'm happy to answer any questions about the product and to help you if you need help determining what you want to buy or something like that. So I am also a, an authorized retailer, and I would be happy to help you and support your purchase of my product. Thank you so much for joining in my launch today. I appreciate you. I have so much gratitude for my fellow quilters out there. I don't think that I'm any better than than you or you know other quilters out there. I am a quilter just like you. I sewed on the dining room table while my kids were playing under my feet and I've you know didn't have a sewing room for a long time and loved my sew steady table because for about you know 15 years that was what I had to sew with and you know I sewed on a budget just like a lot of people and I feel very fortunate that the path has led me to being able to share all of this with you. One of the things I absolutely love best about being a quilter is the shared experience both across generations and with people every day. So I hope that you will find your fun and fancy and happy quilting and have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining in my inaugural event. Have a good day. Bye-bye.